Hi, everyone. Welcome to SIG Multi-Cluster Intro and Deep Dive. Uh, the three of us here today to give this presentation. Uh, for me, I'm Laura Lorenz. I'm from Google. I'm Paul, and my name appears second in the list. And I'm Jeremy Olmsted thompson I'm also from Google. All right. Hello. Let's let's talk about what we're going to talk about. So as Laura has just introduced, this is an intro and deep dive to SIG multi-cluster. So we're going to cover what is the SIG about? We're going to talk about what is the current state of play? What is the current activity within the SIG? We're going to touch on cluster set and namespace sameness. We're going to talk about cluster ID and cluster set membership. We're going to talk about multi-cluster services API and multi-cluster DNS and more than that, as you will see in the coming moments. We're going to do a deepish dive and we're going to have some demos. We're going to talk about the about API, also known as cluster ID, cluster property. We're going to, we're going to see a <coughs> deepish dive and demo on multi-cluster DNS. And we're going to talk about how to contribute to this thing. Okay, so what are we about? Multi-cluster is still a new space. We're seeing more and more multi-cluster deployments in the community. Um, and it's clearly where the community is going, but we still don't have those best practices or tools that we have in a single cluster. If you wanna know how to do something in a single cluster today, you know there's tons of documentation, uh, tons of best practices out there. We just don't have that yet for multi-cluster. We're trying to work on, as, as SIG multi-cluster, we're trying to work on building the tools and primitives and workflows that you'll need to you know, safely deploy your, your applications across multiple clusters. We wanna work with you to help figure out how to connect services between clusters, how to replicate workloads across clusters, and how to manage the, the rollout of the deployments across your multi-cluster group. We made some great progress in areas that we're gonna talk about here shortly, uh, but we really need your input. Real world use cases help us pick what to focus on next. Uh, many of our projects are still fairly early stage and have room to steer a new direction. We're looking to figure out what the next uh, set of projects should be. And uh, we want you to come, you know, join us. Uh, tell us what you're working on. Um, tell us what problems you have so we can help you solve them. So uh, really important to the SIG multi-cluster uh, group is our approach. And this has um, been learned over uh, the years of just trying to make sure that we're focusing on problems that we can really solve um, right now, uh, the use cases that people have today, um, and set ourselves up well for um, the future. So just a couple points about our approach as a SIG is that it's important to us to avoid premature standardization or to solve lots of optional problems. Multi-cluster is so um, new, but also there's so many new variables that come into uh, play when you're dealing with multi-cluster deployments, um, it's really important for us to kind of focus in on uh, what problems people have today. And we really try to focus on specific functionality that we want to build, uh, some of which we'll be demoing for you later. And then if we can work backwards from these specific problems into something bigger, then that's uh, the direction that we want to take. That gives us something that's really applicable up front, but it can give us some insight and information that allows us to uh, work backwards into the larger abstraction. So let's talk a little bit about the current activity and the projects that we are working on today. So the first con conceptual um, basis and foundation for a lot of the multi-cluster work that we're doing is this term uh, called cluster set. And cluster set is a word to represent a pattern of use uh, that we see all over the place for people with multi-cluster deployments. It's some group of clusters that are governed by a single authority. And importantly, they have a really high degree of trust within that set. Um, and this is something that we can leverage when we're describing um, different multi-cluster um, tooling or APIs that we want to uh, come up with. Um, we can kind of focus on this cluster set basis, this foundation, as this group of clusters that have high degree of trust and are governed by a single authority. So one kind of important um, 
side effect of uh, the cluster set or, or uh, item about cluster sets that's really relevant to all the work we've been doing with multi-cluster is the idea of namespace sameness. So once we get into uh, multi-cluster de deployments, we need to say something about if the same namespace is in two different clusters, you know, how, what are the properties about both of them now that these clusters are working together. And the um, link in here is for the position statement from Sig Multi-Cluster about what namespace sameness is. Um, but basically the short version is that uh, for a given namespace in different clusters, they're considered to be the same, their permissions and characteristics should be consistent. Um, and even though the namespace is in a cluster set, not every namespace has to exist in every cluster in the cluster set. If they do, they should behave the same across the cluster set. And this is what gives us the ability to um, operate on a multi-cluster deployment in some similar ways as a single cluster deployment. And um, a new update for, for this, um, this uh, round of KubeCon is uh, about the cluster's cluster set membership uh, being stored in this about kates.io cluster property called clusterset.kates.io. So we're gonna uh, talk about it on the next slide and deep dive later, but um, this is uh, where um, this actual property about a cluster, its cluster set membership uh, will be stored. So when we think about sets of clusters, one of the things that we need to establish that concept effectively is to talk about the coordinates of clusters within that set. The, the name that we have given to that concept is cluster ID. Um, and if you want the details, you can look at KEP 2149, or you can look at the sigs.kates.io about API link, which will uh, send you to the Git repo where the about API is coming together. So about, if you haven't guessed, about is the name of the API group. There's one resource within this API group called cluster property. It's a cluster scoped CRD. And there are two special cluster properties that are meant to allow discoverability within the cluster of information about the cluster set and cluster um, identity of, of the cluster within the cluster set. So the first one is id.kates.io which allows a cluster to identify itself. The next one is clusterset.kates.io, which allows a cluster to identify the cluster set that the cluster is part of. <clears throat> the cluster ID uniquely identifies clusters within a cluster set for the lifetime of membership within that cluster set. And it provides a reference for multi-cluster tooling to build on within a cluster set. So for example, it allows uh, to disambiguate backends for headless services between clusters. It's a coordinate to use for scheduling work and it's a possible annotation for metrics and logs associated uh, with that cluster. Now I'm gonna talk about the multi-cluster services API or MCS, which uh, some of you may have heard us talk about before. Um, the MCS API was the kind of the, the first reset into this new approach that Laura mentioned before, where we just focus on specific problems. And here, um, you know, services seem like a logical place to start. You have services deployed in multiple clusters. You wanna connect them together. Um, this, this is the basis for a, a multi-cluster deployment. And it's a specific problem that had real use cases for us to focus on. So the MCS API uh, builds on the concept of namespace sameness that Laura mentioned and lets you consume a service just by knowing its name across multiple clusters. And we actually use the service name and the namespace to link services together. So you can even uh, deploy a service with the same name in the same namespace in multiple clusters and consume them as a single service with, with just distributed backends. Um, the API focuses only on the API and common behavior. We don't have a de facto implementation and this is, this is by design. Um, we wanted to allow uh, room for various implementations. You know, different platforms, different environments have different needs. Um, some have flat networks. Uh, some have many networks that need to be stitched together. Um, we wanted to leave room for implementers to, you know, do what works best in their area, but provide a common API that you can use to describe how you want your services to be exposed and how you want to consume them. 
Um, this leaves room for you know, centralized or decentralized control planes, depending on what you need. Um, but the idea is that a consumer of the service only ever has to rely on local data. Um, so they get a familiar interface and they don't need to understand the topology of all the clusters. Um, the result is that we have the extension of cluster IP and headless services that just basically work as you'd expect across clusters now with a new name, uh, with a cluster set name instead of a cluster local name. Um, and Laura is gonna dig into DNS in a little bit here. We have some other initiatives going on as well. We are continuing to work with MCS to figure out how to extend uh, the multi-cluster services API to work with network policy in a, um, in a multi-cluster environment with policy applied across clusters. Uh, we're working on figuring out how to address the multi-network scenario where you are stitching together uh, clusters on different networks um, and whether or not that even needs to be something that gets represented in the API or it can be left up for implementations. Um, again, we're trying to just focus on the core problems that need solving and not be too descriptive about how, um, how exactly the problems need to be solved so we don't shut any doors unnecessarily. Um, we're also looking into what it would take to build multi-cluster controllers, controllers with replicas in multiple clusters. And I think the big thing that's come out here is we need some form of distributed leader election. Um, this is something that that is very new as an idea, but we're looking for help uh, building it. So come join us. Uh, come help us figure out what to do here. Um, we have the work API, which is focused on spreading groups of resources to different clusters. Um, so you can roll out your deployments. Um, and of course we have KubeFed. Um, KubeFed has been around for a while. Um, it has some, some users uh, who have who've been interested in a long time, but we've seen it kind of uh, go a little bit into maintenance mode and we're considering archival uh, as we have some new alternatives emerging. So come join us, uh, help us figure out what those alternatives should look like. All right, so I'm gonna take us through uh, two deep dives and demos of some of the work that's been going on. And uh, we're gonna talk about the About API and show you what that looks like and multi-cluster DNS and give you a demo of that as well. So first off with the About API, so as mentioned before, the About API um, is uh, the source for uh, the entire design is in CAP 2149. And it's now available at sigscates.io slash about API, which is what I'm going to demo for you today. And again, uh, we mentioned it's a cluster scoped cluster property CRD of just name and value used for um, the purposes of uniquely identifying clusters and their membership in a cluster set. And uh, more um, concretely over here, I have some examples of what those about API resources may look like. Um, so again, they're in this about Kate's IO um, API group. They're a cluster property kind and they just have names and values, right? Names and values and also down here, names and values. And um, the two special names that we've been talking about is id.kates.io, which these two examples up here are referencing and clusterset.kates.io. And id.case.io is to represent the name of the cluster, whereas cluster set.case.io is to represent the uh, cluster set membership of that cluster. So the exact um, specification of these values are actually um, quite flexible. So you can see there's actually two examples up here of what it might look like for an id.case.io uh, resources value. Um, we uh, recommend uh, the cube system namespaces UUID uh, for uniqueness purposes, uh, which are described in some more detail in the KEP. Um, but as long as the uh, values meet the properties laid out in this KEP um, regarding uniqueness for the length of the membership in the cluster set, um, then um, it can technically just be any value that, that meets those properties, even though this one is. Uh, uh, a likely candidate. So um, what I want to also mention here is that this uh, cluster property kind, this just name value where value is very um, uh, resource specific and only those two um, id.case.io and cluster set.case.io have any specific properties defined in the KEP. Um, it's important to point out that actually um, in the cap, other uses are allowed for this um, API. So you could store any arbitrary properties uh, that you want um, in this cluster property CRD. 
Um, and as long as the names follow the KEP guidelines, uh, which is basically not to conflict with any of the well-known properties of which again, we have those two, ID and cluster set, um, that they must use a suffix and cannot use the reserved case.io or kubernetes.io suffixes. But uh, this means that you could um, use this to store any arbitrary uh, properties that you want to about your cluster in sort of the centralized CRD and make it a little bit easier for you to um, access them using the about API. Um, some ideas that were mentioned over the course of the KEP were, uh, for example, if you wanted some sort of fingerprint um, for some specific um, company or implementation, um, the important part is just to name it whatever you want dot your suffix, um, and then you can put whatever you want in the value field. Um, or uh, under a discussion right now um, regarding uh, multi-network, um, there's an idea of potentially storing network information. So this is just a potential uh, way <coughs> that uh, that might look in the CRD. Um, so any sort of uh, structure and use in here um, is is possible, and we're definitely interested to hear what um, what people might want to leverage uh, cluster property for, um, and happy to um, brainstorm with folks about that, um, both for single cluster purposes and, of course, for multi-cluster purposes. All right, so I want to give a quick demo of the API right now, um, and major shout out to Ishmeet, who did a lot of the work on uh, this. Um, this implementation, I am just the messenger. Uh, so let me change my screen. All right. So uh, to demonstrate this, um, I am uh, using a kind cluster uh, here that doesn't have any CRDs installed at all. And right now I'm in a um, local copy of the about APIs. Um, uh, I cloned uh, the about API from capes.sigs.io here. Um, and I'm going to run this make file um, to install the CRD into this cluster. So this uh, CRD was built with Cube Builder. So for folks who have used Cube Builder before, I'll, this will probably look very uh, familiar and uh, all the boilerplate that's inside and generated code that's inside this, um, uh, this GitHub repo. Um, but if uh, you haven't used it before, once you get into this cluster property, um, directory, you have this make file that you can uh, run make install. As long as you have controller gen and customize in the right places, uh, then the make file will apply the CRD. So we can see now that the CRD is here, cluster properties that about decades that IO. And again, it's just that name and value, right? So I actually have the um, actually have the source here from uh, the um, CR, the custom resource definition um, in this uh, repo here uh, with uh, everything um, being just these two, uh, these two values, right? Or these two fields, I should say, right? Okay, so um, oh, uh, what I want to do next is to actually switch over to another terminal where I'm in a samples directory because in here I have this, um, uh, example cluster property, which I have to have open up here, which is again from the slides, like uh, very simple, just this name and value. And in this case, I'm using a value that looks something like a cube system namespace UUID. Um, so if I go ahead and apply that in here, then now we have this uh, cluster property in the about capes.io um, API group that's called id.capes.io. So the whole thing here is that now I can get uh, my cluster property called id.cates, gotta spell it right though, id.cates.io. And I can give myself a, a look at it, at it all here. And this is how I can directly access this value right through this cluster property um, API now. So I'm doing it here from kubectl, but you could of course do this um, from any uh, Kubernetes API client. Um, and this is how you can just access um, whatever ID resource uh, that you or another implementation has put um, in the CRD. So that's the idea behind um, the about API, simple and sweet. Um, this is a demo with, again, id.case.io that needs to follow some certain properties. But again, you could put any uh, cluster property you want in here uh, and use it um, in your um, controllers uh, as, as you like. All right, so next I wanna talk a little bit about multi-cluster DNS. 
Um, so uh, I have some slides here that show two um, of several uh, parts of the specification. Uh, so we have the cluster set IP case uh, that Jeremy mentioned earlier for MCS API. And just switching to the next slide really quick, the multi-cluster headless case. So I've just pulled up the A and quad A record uh, definitions, um, but the specification also um, has information about serp records. Um, but the idea here is that um, for a cluster set IP service, uh, one that you have exported with the MCS API, um, so that, uh, for example, over here in cluster A, if you have some pods that we're calling blue, and over here in cluster B, we have some more co pods that we are calling blue, um, we want to be able to treat them like they're the same service. From cluster B, we should be able to get backends, blue backends from cluster A. From cluster A, we should be able to get blue backends from cluster B, et cetera. Um, and from a DNS perspective, how this works um, is with the cluster set IP is that we have a DNS name that looks very similar to the DNS names that you're used to for single cluster, uh, blue.test.svc, but you'll see the change here is that it ends in cluster set.local instead of cluster.local. So the idea here is that this is very similar to what you are already used to um, when single cluster uh, deployments. Um, and you can just sort of seamlessly drop in uh, this cluster set.local zone at the end and the MCS API and the MCS controller uh, will route uh, this DNS name to the VIP that will go to any of the associated backends um, in any cluster. So same idea for yellow. If we have yellow backends over here and yellow backends over here, one DNS to rule them all, right? We can get to the cluster A backends or the cluster B backends with just yellow.test.svc.clusterset.local. And on the multi-cluster headless side, um, for the uh, aggregate DNS names, same type of story, you can um, get all of the um, information from uh, cluster A and cluster B. Um, how headless um, A and quad A records work is you get back all of the individual IPs. Uh, so this works the same uh, for multi-cluster headless. If you uh, query blue.test.svc.clusterset.local for backends that are all headless services. Then you'll get back all of the IPs, the pod IP for cluster A1 here, the pod IP for cluster B, blue 1, blue 2, and blue 3, right? You'll get all four of them um, so that you can uh, do uh, what you want with them. Um, same thing for yellow.test.svc.clusterset.local. Uh, and then the example down here is showcasing um, how we handle pod DNS. So uh, for individual, uh, to access the IP for just an individual pod, um, in uh, normal single cluster uh, headless services, um, the host name uh, plus uh, the rest of the uh, uh, normal aggregate DNS, uh, the service um, name, namespace, uh, svc.cluster.local is how you can disambiguate between the different backends by DNS in a single cluster. But in the case of two clusters or more clusters, right, multi-cluster, we need one more piece of information to disambiguate. We need to know which cluster as uh, pod we want to go in. Go, what clusters pod we want? So um, you can uh, kind of see the problem here of cluster A, if it has blue one, Cluster B has blue one, then just saying blue one dot blue dot test dot SVC dot cluster set dot local is not specific enough. So we need to throw that uh, cluster uh, name in there too. So this uh, single IP gets uh, pulled back from blue one dot cluster A dot blue dot test dot SVC dot cluster dot local, whereas this uh, pod IP over here in cluster B, even though it has the same host name, uh, we get just its IP from blue one dot cluster B dot blue dot test dot SVC dot cluster set dot local, right? So um, this uh, really um, uh, clearly showcases the use of that um, cluster ID uh, for the ability for a cluster to know uh, what its own name is so that we can actually um, put this cluster name into uh, the DNS records for the purposes of multi-cluster headless um, services. All right, now I would like to do a quick demo of the multi-cluster DNS plugin for core DNS and major shout out to Jeremy who did all the work on this one. All right, so over here, I have a uh, version, I have a same kind of cluster and I have a version of core DNS deployed that has the multi-cluster DNS plugin 
installed and I have it configured, you can see here, um, to forward uh, the cluster set dot local uh, request to the multi-cluster plugin. So uh, with this uh, configured and overall the core DNS installed on my cluster here, uh, having this plugin in here, now any request to a uh, DNS name that ends in cluster set dot local is going to be sent along to the multi-cluster DNS plugin. And um, what it will do is then um, base the um, IP that it's going to respond with uh, on the service imports uh, that are present in this cluster. So I also have a service import um, that I have dropped in here. And actually I think up here, yep. I have an example of what that service import looks like. So my service um, in the demo namespace, um, it's a type cluster set IP and it has this you know, fake IP attached to it, um, but uh, the combination of our multi-cluster DNS plugin and being able to see the service import that has this name and namespace and knowing that this is the VIP for that um, service import, um, this is what we're going to get the response back for a DNS name of the form myservice.demo.svc.clusterset.local. So we can go ahead and actually try that out because I also have already deployed this little um, DNS utils pod in my demo namespace and it has NS lookup installed. And so I'm gonna uh, request that very DNS name, myservice.demo.svc.clusterset.local, kind of crossing over here. And we'll see that the response we get back is that address that's in the service import, one, two, three, four. So um, this is again, a property of the multi-cluster DNS plugin that's in uh, the core DNS that is deployed on this cluster uh, that's uh, using that plugin to resolve any DNS names that end in cluster set.local. So that is what uh, that looks like. All right, let's talk about how you can get involved in SIG multi-cluster. Um, this is the part of the intro and the deep dive where I tell you that one of the most important things that you can do, it has high value, it should be fairly low effort, is to share your use cases, your problems, your ideas. Um, note that use cases and problems, super valuable. If you don't have any ideas and you just have a nice big shopping cart full of use cases and problems, we'd still love to hear about it. Um, so I want to just make a personal request to you. If you're seeing this and you've thought about, you've thought about uh, the, this functional area like that, that we're talking about, we'd love to know your use cases, your problems, your ideas. Check out our homepage. It's on the community site, SIG Multicluster. Give us a ping in Slack. The channel name is, I hope you're sitting down for this, it's SIG Multicluster. And you can hit us up on the list, which is called Kubernetes SIG Multicluster. We'd love to have you join the meetings. They're bi-weekly bi on Tuesday. Um, they're at 12.30 Eastern, 9.30 Pacific, and 16.30 UTC. If you have something that you'd like to present, feel free to put it on to the agenda and just come and talk to us about it. I'd love to see you there. Hope to see you soon. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks everybody. Hope you enjoyed Thank KubeCon. You. Yeah, Have enjoy a great KubeCon, KubeCon experience. Whoops. Get the Q and A. <laughs>